Fair warning, friends. Should you prefer to remain unburdened by foreknowledge of the thrilling adventures of Kratos, Atreus, and yours truly, then turn back now. Spoilers for Ragnarok lie ahead. All the relationships, especially the ones that carried over 2018, God of War, Kratos realizing that he's part of something. He's part of, God forbid that I say it, a family. And I think that's a great moment for Kratos because I don't think he ever, in his wildest dreams, ever imagined that he'd be part of anything again. I am Christopher Judge and I play Kratos. Hi, my name is Bruno Velasquez. I'm the animation director on God of War Ragnarok. Eu sou Ricardo Juarez e sou o dublador do Kratos no Brasil. أنا هشام الشاذلي بلعب شخصية كريتوس في النسخة العربي من الإصدار الجديد لجاد اوف وور. كريتوس no koe o tanto sashite itadaite orimasu Miyake Kenta des. Hi, my name is Eric Jacobus. I'm the stuntman for Kratos as well as the stunt coordinator for God of War Ragnarok. My role as an animation director is really there to assist Chris and the other actors on the style of movement that we want to keep consistent across the characters. I always think physically bigger, so I try to stand bigger, I try to stand wider, I try to stand more firmly. And every time he moves, I want it to have a sense of purpose, that he's going to do something. Because Kratos, in my mind, doesn't ever do something by happenstance. There's always a definitive objective. So that would give purpose to his movements. There's a certain amount of chaos with, with Kratos' combat. And there's a moment, and I always clock it, from about 90 degrees this way to 90 degrees that way. When I do that attack, it's like I throw my entire body into it. And there's a little bit of chaos and I catch myself at the end. And normally, normally in other characters, that's not allowed, right? You're not allowed to kind of lose it like that. But in that 90 degree window, I'm allowed to lose it. And they like that and then I pull it right back. And that's kind of like the Kratos brand that, you know, the animators and the director have really helped foster and create with me. Every direction that we give to our actors or animators is to always keep them consistent, to put themselves into that space of always being a warrior ready for battle. The animators and the director helped sort of create a, a language around how Kratos moves. Some of those things include a really fast return to idle so that he always looks like he's in combat, a, a certain amount of shake when he, when he swings a weapon. You know, there are these little pieces that I'm always thinking of whenever I do movements for Kratos that really help make the character feel like he's in the combat the whole time. Working with Christopher Judge, who was the voice and also motion capture performer for Kratos, has been one of the best experiences that I've had in my career. A lot of the motion that comes through in the cinematic, especially, really is just him uh, becoming Kratos. For me, the first time I inhabited the role of Kratos, I was in such splendid physical condition that I actually felt like Kratos. When I saw the rendering, I felt that I was him. あの、その、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの
So at the beginning of God of War Ragnarok, Kratos is in a different stage than he was in the previous game. Of course, now he has accepted the passing of his wife. He's accepting his role as a father, but then now his son is seeking a lot more. So Kratos is coming to terms on how do I best raise Atreus and how do I guide him? We follow your every win. But you don't believe in any of it. And still I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? We are very interested in exploring what it's like to have a relationship with your own child. Even, you know, Chris Judge, him being a father as well, it's always something that comes up on stage, talking about our kids and talking about our relationships with our own families. Well, some of the things emotionally with Kratos are very readily accessible to me. Being a father, being willing to do whatever it takes to ensure that your children are safe. التعامل التعامل ما بينه وما بين ابنه ده كان اكتر شيء او المشاهد دي او الجمل اللي بيتكلم فيها مع ابنه كانت بالنسبه لي ممتعه جدا لان كانت بتل بتعلمني لحد ما عن طريقتي بكتشف بكتشف طريقتي انا في التعامل مع ابني حتى كريتوس conseguiu evoluir ele é uma versão melhor de si mesmo e ele faz tudo pelo Atreus tudo tudo Ele está preparando o Atreus para o Ragnarok. E para que isso aconteça, ele vai se dedicar ao máximo. Ele vai além do que ele poderia imaginar. Even though Kratos has a difficulty expressing the way that he feels about Atreus, it's really demonstrated through Kratos' actions that he really cares about him. He would move mountains for him. You know, he literally climbed the highest point to respect the wishes of his wife. That just shows that Kratos really, once he cares for someone, even though he doesn't express it through his words, he does it through his actions. Kratos no longer pontificates to Atreus. He's no longer speaking to an audience that just listens. He is now having debates with rebuttals with a young man who possesses his own ideas, his own thoughts, what he perceives to be his own trajectory to get to where he needs to be. The hard part, I think, of Kratos' journey is him learning to listen. And that's what comes with having such black and white view of right and wrong. A lot of times you're not receptive to what someone is telling you about how they feel. And I think that was a huge part of Kratos' growth was him learning how to listen. Kunkayo Hey, don't go forgetting this, what'll get you there. Another fun part about being on set is just seeing Chris Judge and Sonny Seljic just interact with each other. Almost like Kratos and Atreus interact in the game. They become buddies throughout the years and it's almost like father and son relationship is almost manifested on set the same way. I met Sonny when he was 10. So I've seen all the stages of his development. Now, in Ragnarok, he's a teenager, feeling himself, good looking young kid, and he had ideas. Like he actually was able to break down scenes and have his own ideas about them. And I remember the first time it happened, I, I just stood back like, wow, this is a whole different dude. Like this isn't, you know, that little kid that had a million distractions. This is a young man who is very intelligent, very thoughtful, because I had gone through it with my children. And it was something that I had missed very much as a father, as a man, was seeing this evolution of a human being and seeing them growing into who they are going to be. 
that part of it for me was was, was great. And it, it was just, it was really interesting to me to see that, not only between Kratos and Atreus, but between Sonny and I. It has been really interesting to see how the character of Kratos has evolved, especially on the last game, coming from the Greek period over to the Norse era, to see him become a father once again, to see him recognize that there was a lot of things in his past that perhaps he wasn't very proud of, a lot of terrible things that he did, and seeing that almost him getting a second chance at having a family, at raising a child, going through those changes, sort of accepting himself, it always has been really interesting to me. If I do this... Fate only binds you if you let it do what is necessary, not because it is written. I'm so excited for people to be able to continue this journey called God of War Ragnarok. My youngest son, who is one of my harshest critics, said, Daddy, uh, I didn't want it to end. Well, neither did I. I uh, missed every day that I wasn't uh, with this collaboration of folks. So if you loved God of War 2018, uh, I truly hope that you have a chance to experience Ragnarok is gonna blow your socks off. Truly. Oh.